Hi, good afternoon for everyone. Thank you for having me here. I'm Melinda Bognar and I'm going to talk about the Waving Timeline of AI, Foundations of the Algorithmic Archetype in Architecture. The presentation is going to embrace the historical foundations of artificial intelligence in order to see how the field approached intelligent systems and what was the relation to the Jungian archetype. Then by positioning AI and algorithmic creation in architecture, we will see how can a code approach the archetypal idea. So artificial intelligence is still one of the grouping topics of researchers having its roots in the logis logician understanding of the world. And starting with modeling biological neurons, AI quickly became a calculation-based science with promising results. However, the question of computing dynamic systems is still open. The presentation will focus on the rise and fall of AI, seeking the synthesis of connectionist and symbolicist approach in the present, which some might call AI 2.0 or advanced connectionism. Based on the development of AI, several traditional disciplines, such as architecture, become reinterpreted and augmented. From the examination of AI in terms of Hegelian dialectical method, we will shortly discuss impacts of AI on architectural design thinking. In order to get closer to the answer to what is computational design thinking connoting architecture. The history of artificial intelligence as a waving timeline of rises and falls, accompanied by diverse theoretical approaches. Besides having its roots in the philosophy of logic, AI has been developed closely related to other scientific areas. It is one of the six cognitive sciences with blurring borderlines between philosophy, linguistics, anthropology, neuroscience, and psychology, which has the joint scope of understanding the mind and interactions. The standalone notion it was developed in parallel with cybernetics. In the triple split of the development of the electronic brain, AI had two periods titled symbolicism and connectionism, while cybernetics was considered as actionism. The two disciplines have common roots, uh, although cybernetics proposed the control and communication in the animal and the machine, in the words of Norbert Wiener. John McCarthy, who coined the term AI, wrote, as suggested by the term artificial intelligence, we were not considering human behavior except as a clue to possible effective ways of doing tasks. The only participants who studied human behavior were Newell and Simon. The goal was to get away from studying human behavior and consider the computer as a tool for solving certain classes of problems. This AI was created a branch of computer science and not as a branch of psychology. Uh, Simon and Newell at Carnage Mellon, working on cognitive science, developed the theory, how would machine had goals, uh, which Minsky later also adopted. Goal-directed intelligence agents are also called rational agents, borrowed the notion from economy. The rational agent, by definition, always has clear preferences and models uncertainty via expected values of uh, variables, and it also always chooses to act with an optimal expected outcome for itself from among all possible actions. Throughout the history, human thinking was always central priority for scientists, uh, grounding its field in AI logicians named Aristotle around uh, 300 BC described the process of human thinking as the mechanical manipulation of symbols. Later in the 500s, Thomas Hobbes, um, the grandfather of AI, proposed thinking as a manipulation of symbols and reasoning as a numerical computation. From the 17th century, the mind-body problem started to emerge when the question of mind and matter was first described by Descartes, uh, establishing the Cartesian method. Especially in the past century, when significant theorems were proved, the discipline started to develop faster than ever. In 1928, Carnap and Karl Hampel proposed the first theory of mind as a computational process. It was also called the computational theory of mind, CTM, in philosophy later on. Following that in 1930, Gödel proved the incompleteness theorem, which was also the same year that Alan Turing demonstrated the computable theorem this was followed by Claude Shannon's information theory in 1948. 
Briefly, these milestones paved the way towards AI to become a remarkably complex field from psychology to computationalism. From the 1940s, based on the logic and foundations, the discovery of artificial neurons began. For many curious people, the triggering statement that started investment and research in the field of machine intelligence was the Church-Turing thesis. This thesis suggested that a machine can simulate any con conceivable mathematical cognition by rearranging simple zeros and one symbols. The first wave of AI connectionism, also called parallel distributed processing or neural computation, started with the discovery of NCP neuron. The first mathematical model of an artificial neuron was introduced by Warren McCulloch and Walter Pitts in 1943. The structure of MCP neuron was named after investors and was the first step towards perceptron, the most fundamental unit of deep neural networks. Later on, the research of McCulloch and Pitts was published in Mathematical Biophysics by Nikola Rasevsky, uh, the father of mathematical biophysics. So the story of Marvin Minsky, the father of AI, also began with the determinative discovery. Minsky's first experiments started with crayfish claw. Uh, thus, the beginning of AI also introduced experimenting with biological systems, such as in the cybernetician practice. Minsky started his PhD in 1950 at the Princeton University in the Faculty of Mathematics. In 51, George Miller provided him with a fund at Harvard to work on the Stochastic Neural Analog Reinforcement Calculator, the SNARK, which was the first randomly wired neural network learning machine. Minsky was working with Dean Edmonds and Princeton Fellow to create the first artificial neural network when he was only 24 years old. Following his Princeton years, Minsky returned to Harvard and as a junior fellow, uh, he altered from brain mimicking neural network to symbolic systems. This is a turn in the AI history. The emphasis shifted uh, to the nature of human thoughts, which was a turning point in the field when it finally took a different direction from cybernetics. Thus, connectionist period of artificial intelligence was short circulated uh, but left a strong foundation of the next chapter. The symbolicist approach, which uh, stemmed from Minsky's work, evolved over the next few years and was referred to the good old fashioned AI and proposed that the future of AI lay in the development of symbolic systems rather than the further development of neural network model. This is how we get to expert systems and expert systems which uh, mimics the human decision-making ability based on if their rules started to rise in the 80s. It is considered first a truly successful form of artificial intelligence. As a knowledge-based system, it was uh, composed of the knowledge base and the interface engine. The concept of expert systems was first developed in the 1970s by Edward Figenbaum, a professor and the founder of the Knowledge System Laboratory at Stanford University. Feierbaum explained that uh, the world was moving from data processing to knowledge processing, a transition which is being enabled by new uh, processor technology and computer architectures. In 1985, Nicholas Negroponte founded MIT Media Lab and invited Marvin Minsky and his colleague Simon Parpart. Nicholas Negroponte, who was trained as an architect, had the idea that media would become significant by the 2000s and there would be no paper. These years are considered the great happiness of AI with several prospering inventions, such as the pointing stick in IBM laptop keyboards, Benton hologram used in most credit cards, as well as the Aspen movie map, the processor of Google Street View. During the 1980s, Minsky was fascinated by a new question, what is consciousness? Minsky and his colleague Seymour Parpet theorized that the phenomenon we call consciousness is the cumulative effect of panoply of redundant neural processes. And according to Hegel, the world makes progress by moving from one extreme to another, and it generally requires three moves to establish the balance. It looks like it is precisely the case of AI development, 
where we have had two moves from one extreme to another one, from connectionism to symbolicism, and from there to advanced connectionism. So the pendulum has to move back one more time, not to symbolicism, as we know, but to something with the best aspects of both worlds. This cannot be done by simply combining them, but instead must include the exit to an entirely new level through thesis and antithesis to synthesis. Supporting that architecture reflects the, the zygist a parallel um, with the, the changing fashions in AI, architecture visions also propose revolutionary ideas. Since the building is considered the most complex machines, if intelligence machines would exist, intelligent buildings could also do. Starting with the connectionist approach, autopoetic self-conscious uh, uh, and uh, user-conscious ideas were rising around the 1960s. For example, Cedric Price was found palace as the reaction machine to the needs of users or the generator project as a building scale automated structure, which is today further strolled by Skylar Tribbits at the MIT by, by self-assembling systems. On the other hand, an illustrative example for symbolicist approach in architecture are the works of Philip Stedman and his colleagues Stedman studied at Cambridge between 1916 and 1965 and after his graduation joined the famous lab Center for Land Use and the Build Form Studies established by Leslie Martin in 1967. Together with Lionel March at the Center of Configurational Studies, they worked on mathematical methods for representing and enumerating small rectangular plans. One special focus was uh, research in the mathematical and computer representation of designs, which went beyond the traditional architect's methods uh, of hand drawing and physical modeling, which invited the logical approach that everything is translatable into symbols. The buildings become manually computable for the first time. In his book, The Geometry of Environment, Philip Stedman, along with Lionel March, proposed the optimization of floor plans. A digital strongly affects how we think about physical, the material world. Mm, something that uh, digitalization uh, only affects processes that we already know and makes them more effective and uh, automate uh, the operations. Instead, digital technologies allow to create something new. Computers offers a new perspective on things, different how we looked at the world before. The main challenge um, does not lie in the measurement of computational design techniques, but rather in acculturating the model of uh, computational design thinking. The advanced design thinking is fostered by opportunities hiding in AI. Examining the processes in history, primarily architects were responsible for the wall design and the implementation process. With the time, these processes separated from each other. Every field had its own leader in charge, which now can reunion again. By the means of computational technologies, architectural design is a wall in present and a wall in history. Wall in present because the actors of the process are aware of each other real time such as uh, they are aware of circumstances in real time. Furthermore, the wall in history, because with the ability to track the use of the building in harmony with the digital twin, the building can be reinterpreted from time to time. AI offers more information to be implemented in the architectural design in the interest of creating comprehensive plan. Architecture always want to create something uh, appropriate and complete, almost the perfect solution in the given circumstances. Now AI allows us to take a closer approach to this goal. Since the um, existence of humanity, people have always seeking perfection and never reaching it. Uh, we are now trying to build artificial intelligence to reach this condition, which would require creators unanimously agree to the goal. 
the research in AI is uh, proce proceeding on the same foundations, but in different ways. The vast number of different fields connected to AI proves that every branch believes in its theorem and imagine the future of AI in their own perspective. The only one phenomenon from which the obviously start from the human mind, but without completely cognize the human mind and understand its mechanisms, um, such as uh, having generally accepted position about its qualities, it is through venture. Marvin Minsky also emphasized in his books that the importance of knowing uh, human creatures and the consciousness before creating something based on it. Irrational, incomputable factors very much influence human uh, decision making, while the goal with AI is to create a system which is perfect and makes the optimal decision. And human beings, the source of misunderstanding is usually subjectivity. The only thing which uh, unquestionable is what is measurable. Uh, which can be expressed by numbers. Um, at the beginning of experimentations, AI promised to substitute humans in a certain position, in those positions which are measurable and countable, putting the responsibility on AI systems to not to be subjective and uh, always act appropriately, objectively and correctly, pre presupposes the expert, uh, exercise of global quality systems which is accepted by everyone. This system requires to involve legal party, uh, practices to the developments. The primary form of the model was defined by Plato. He called them ideas, timeless, absolute, unchangeable ideas. And he used the word uh, imitations for defining the real physical world at the time knowledge was passing by words. The realization of the ideas required intensive uh, abstraction. Archetype by Young as a universal archaic patterns and images that drive from the collective unconscious and are the physical counterpart of instinct. In the words of Carl Young, archetypes, in spite of their conservative nature, are not static, but in a continuous dynamic flux. Thus, the algorithmic archetypes, in order to see how archetypes work in algorithmic environments, this paper considered Entity Component System, ECS, as the main framework. This framework internally groups all entities with the same type together in a set of package arrays, uh, which we call archetype. Archetypes are typically created automatically uh, when combination of components first occurs in an application. ECS is basically a way of organizing data, typically used in games and simulations. The basic of structure is an entity which is augmented with different components. By mixing and adding these components, it will be possible to create a unique entities with the same collection of parts. This approach is broadly used in Unity. An array is a list of data. Each piece of data in an array is identified by an index number representing its position in the array. Arrays are zero based, which means that the first element in an array is zero, the second element is one, and so on. In this example, an array named Coswave is created in a field with the uh, cosine values. This data is displayed three separate ways on the screen. This is a simple code from processing C.0 and it is used to illustrate a basic uh, script page. We can add an entire code in the block as below. Mm, note the comments are in the code itself and we have the line numbers. This is the output of the processing script once run on the application indicating the archetype of a certain sequence. In the project-oriented approach, data and functionality is grouped together within a relevant class. By this system, it is appropriate to, to store all the components together in memory, efficient for storage and access as well. This is a system for anything that can be seen 
Moreover, its more popular application is in VR games. Assimilating this idea with autoencoders hidden layers, it is visible that both appropriate for data compression and storing enough information to create the outcome. The difference is that while ECS is looking for always unique different outputs, autoencoder is decoding the similar output in the input. This design lets us write fast vectorizable loops. This is the big trade-off, the archetype. Uh, we gain integration speed at the cost of copying components when adding and removing components. Thank you so much for your attention and for further discussion, please contact me by email or social media. Thank you.